Hey everybody, welcome to our first video in what will be, I hope, a series. We're calling it, You're Doing It Wrong. How to sleep in a hammock the right way. We hear it a lot. I like hammocks, but I wouldn't want to sleep in one. Or they're not that comfortable. Or my legs hurt. Or I sleep on my side. I feel claustrophobic. They're cold. They're unstable. I'm afraid I'm gonna fall out. And so forth. Well, I've got news for you. If you've uttered any of those things, you're doing it wrong. Look. Hammocking may seem like one of those things that should be straightforward, that everyone should just know how to do, like, I don't know, <laughs> tying your hiking boots. But, um, newsflash, you're probably doing that wrong too. But more on that in another video. In any case, it's not. Which is why so many people think they don't find hammocks that comfortable and would certainly never take them camping in lieu of a tent. I mean, please. Well, if that's you, this video could literally change your life. You're welcome in advance. Cause here's the thing, hammocking is absolutely comfortable and your legs shouldn't hurt and you can still sleep on your side and they don't have to be cold and you're not gonna fall out. Unless of course you're using one of those dumb hammocks with the spreader bar at the top that makes the hammock like kind of lay more flat that, then you're definitely gonna fall out. Those are a terrible idea. So how do you sleep in a hammock then? Let's start at the beginning. First of all, you've got to hang your hammock correctly. Otherwise, everything falls to pieces. You should be able to figure out after hanging your hammock a few times how far from the ground it needs to go so your butt doesn't graze the grass when you climb in. But a good rule of thumb is to place the straps around the tree at about head height and then adjust from there. And of course make sure you're using tree friendly straps. That generally means straps that are at least one and a half inches wide. Not those garbagey little thin cords. Don't use those. Those are terrible. They kill trees. Secondly, don't pull the hammock as tight as you possibly can. I know your brain tells you that the best way to ensure that your body stays flat when it's in the hammock is to pull it tight, but your brain is wrong. What you actually want to do is hang your hammock with about a 30 degree sag. Now that's pretty easy to do if there's a built-in ridge line on your hammock like I have with the Kamek Mantis. If that's not a feature that your hammock possesses, then think, you know, 90 degrees, then 45 degrees, then, you know, a little less than that. And ta-da! A ridge line actually makes it so you can't possibly pull the hammock any tighter than the length of the ridge line, which is super handy and one feature I just really like about this hammock. But if the goal is not to be shaped like a banana when you get in, then what's the point of this saggy hang? So glad you asked because it's the only way to get to the next step, which is the most important. Lay in your hammock diagonally, not sideways, not parallel with the hammock, diagonally. See why? Because now I'm laying almost flat. Yeah, my head and feet will be just slightly elevated, but that's actually a healthy sleeping position. Indigenous cultures have been doing this for thousands of years, okay? It works. They should know. And guess what? When you're laying diagonally, you can lay on your back, side, in the fetal position, however the heck you want. And chances are, if you're a tosser and turner like me, you'll do a lot less tossing and turning in a hammock because there are no pressure points. How great is that? It also takes care of the whole claustrophobic issue. If you're lying diagonally, see, the walls won't be closing in around you. Brilliant, right? So now you know how to solve the most common hammocking issue. But what about the other stuff? Like staying warm and dry and not getting eaten by bugs. Well, the warmth thing is an issue. Here in the outdoor industry, we call it cold butt syndrome. CBS if you like. And it happens in a hammock and not in a tent because in a hammock, you're suspended above the ground, which means air can now move both above and below you instead of, you know, just above you, like, you know, in a tent. So yeah, you might have to use a heavier sleeping bag, but since any insulation that you're laying on top of won't actually be insulating you, if it's cool or just plain cold, you're gonna need a bit more. Start with a sleeping pad. That might be all you need for mild temperatures. If not, the next layer of insulation goes beneath your hammock instead of in it with you, an under quilt. It hangs underneath, but close to the hammock to block any air from swirling below you, giving you a bad case of CBS. Of course, a fly or tarp can also help block air from blowing on you from above, but it also, you know, keeps out rain, which is nice. Drape it over a ridge line, then guy it out with stakes or by tying it to the trunks of nearby trees. And don't forget a drip line, which is basically just a short little length of cord or something tied around each end of your suspension straps to keep water from dripping down to your hammock. Warm and dry. As for staying bug free, use a bug net, obviously. 
I like a hammock that has a built-in bug net that's attached or detached via a zipper, like with this Kamek Mantis. But an aftermarket add-on will do the exact same thing, just, you know, not quite as conveniently. Lastly, if you'll be camping or backpacking in your hammock, consider getting a hammock with guy lines. They're here on the Mantis and just help keep the wings of the bug net, which are also very handy pockets, away from your face. Not absolutely necessary, of course, but nice to have. As for whether you should get a single or a double, that totally depends on your height and preference. I fit quite well into a single at five foot three, but I do like a double as it gives me more room to sort of stretch out. But it also weighs more, so that's something to consider if you're taking your hammock backpacking and weight is an issue. Well, that about wraps it up, guys. Hopefully you'll no longer be doing it wrong when you head outdoors and string up your hammock. Think you'll give hammocking another try now? Maybe even a hammock camping, huh? I mean, I think you should. But if you do have a question we didn't answer, ask it in the comments below. And if you've been an ardent hammock camper for ages now, feel free to post that too, because I'm sure you've got some tips and tricks of your own. And make sure to follow us on all the social channels, like, you know, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. We're at TerraDrift at all of them. And for even more great outdoorsy content, head to TerraDrift.com for written posts about all manner of outdoorsy and sustainable subjects. Also, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Wander on.